everybody. Welcome to It Matters Radio. This is Monica Brinkman, and you are watching On the Brink. It is a show where we bring you the best in music, the best in entertainment, and today we are so proud to introduce to you one of the hottest new jazz stars, I have to say. And I'm saying star because that is what she is, and her name is Rebecca Angel. Welcome, Rebecca. Hi, thanks so much for having me, Monica. You know, Rebecca, um, when I first heard about you, from Lydia, actually, who was mm -hmm. wonderful, I said, okay, let me check her out. You know, I was I was expecting this pop singer, you know, which we get, we get hundreds of pop singers, believe me. Right. And what I found was something unique. I found yeah. someone that is a little more jazzy and bluesy. There's some pop in there. There's a little bit, uh, you know, difference and influences in the songs. But it was so refreshing to see someone at your age um, just embrace this type of music. So I am so interested in finding out how your journey in life has brought you to this point. So let's start back when you were pretty young. Is there a time when you first found yourself attracted to music or singing? Yeah, you know, honestly, um, I was brought up in a musical family. My father is a jazz trumpet player. So he introduced me to music at a very young age, all different styles of music, especially jazz. And um, he would perform. So I was very lucky growing up being able to perform with his band. I was what? about 15. When you were 15 years old, you started yeah. performing? Yeah, yeah. So we would play um, in New York City. We played at the Iridium Jazz Club. So that kind of introduced me to the whole performance world and um, music as, you know, a potential career path. And so I, I became more serious about it. I started taking lessons in high school. And I, when I started looking into colleges, I thought it'd be great to study jazz voice as a major so mm. um we we're looking at different schools and i was really drawn to ithaca college and um, that's where i ended up going to undergrad um ah. yeah so I, I graduated a year ago um and and one reason i was really drawn to ithaca was because the new york voices studied there yes and they're a very famous vocal jazz group for people who don't know um so they started there and i knew it was a great program so I um I went to the information sessions and applied. It was my first, you know, first choice, and I got in. And I was wow. really excited about that. Um, and luckily, I was actually able to study with Kim Nazarian from the New York Voices uh, during my time there. So that was just great exposure to music. Oh and yes. Styles. Um, so that was great, and also at a very young age, I started working with my producer Jason Miles. And he, he worked with my father, so that's how I got the introduction. I started working with him around age 15 as well. Oh, he's, um, he is just excellent. Yeah. he's, he's what, what a great teacher and mentor. Yes, absolutely. Um, he introduced me to so much music, and he really helped shape, you know, my musical path for, you know, where I am today. So um, I had some very great mentors and influences. That's on. fantastic. Yeah. Did you sure. ever do anything while you were in high school or, you know, when they have talent shows or, you yeah. know, all these special events? Yeah, I definitely did. I was involved actually in a lot of musicals in high school. Um, I co-directed a couple of them and I was in a bunch of them. Um, I did, you know, very young age, I did a Broadway um, training center, this Broadway. <laughs> and, oh, great. Uh, great experience. Like, yeah, yeah. So that was really cool. And then, um, you know, in high school, I, I did also vocal jazz ensembles, um, and choirs and stuff. And I also was in a Jewish choir and performed at Lincoln Center, Carnegie Hall. So I was always involved with- So you've yeah, been with some groups that have actually traveled to venues and, and when you were quite young. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I wish more schools would have programs that would support this because what that did was that gave you a real true experience of what 
life is like when you're touring mm -hmm. or on the road. Um, yeah. you're, you get over your fear real fast, you know, not the <laughs> nerves, but the fear, <laughs> you know, and, and it, it makes you prepared to go after what your passion is in life. And obviously it's music and, and singing. Mm -hmm. Um, did you ever write any music or when you were young nope. or yeah, even definitely. at this age? Yeah. So my, my dad loves writing music and um, he would write some melodies and I'd come up with lyrics and two songs from my EP um, are actually originals, Feel Alive and What We Had. I oh, okay. With my father. Um, but growing up, I, I definitely did songwriting and I continued that in college and learned more about different um, techniques of writing and, and uh, different lyrics and did poetry. So um, I'm definitely writing more and and i have more original music that'll be coming out soon so um yeah, yeah. that's gonna and we're gonna talk about that um after mm -hmm. we we take a break but um what's it been like though as a young female mm -hmm. um i i know it's difficult I, I people don't realize what entertainers go through and the expenses mm -hmm. that they incur and the time that they spend but I'm thinking that I bet you have met some very influential people mm -hmm. who have helped you along the way. Mm -hmm. What would you tell a young person today if they do meet these type of people in their life, how to mm -hmm. um, approach them and how to uh, communicate with them? Yeah, I think that's really important. If there's um, a musician or, or in any field, really someone that you idolize or really look up to, um, to really do your research and know the background of the person. Try to, I know people sometimes they like for even interviews, you want to do a lot of research, know about um, the person you'll be interviewing you. So I, I kind of think of it as a similar way, like just be very knowledgeable of that person, their accomplishments, who yes. they've worked with. And I think that puts you um, kind of ahead of the game on if they're going to pay attention to you. Well, you know, I, I think that you're the first person, I want to tell you, we've been doing our show for years, and mm -hmm. you are the first person who has stated that, and it's so yeah. true. How better to start a conversation with someone when you have a common ground, when you know something mm -hmm. about them, or you might know their interests and talk to them That's about that? Funny. Yeah, and, and um, to kind of... Further, that there is this one singer that I've really idolized, Cyril Ame, and she's a French jazz singer. Um, so I had gone to a bunch of her concerts and like really loved her music. Obviously, I you know would go over to her after some concerts sometimes. Oh, great job, whatever. You know, most times probably wouldn't remember me, but I remember one time specifically, I came up to her and I said. I transcribed the solo of um, your scatting on Cricketism, which was a song she just came out with, um, a bebop song. And uh, I said, I really, really love your scatting and your abilities. Do you ever do master classes? And that wow. um, alone kind of got her like, oh, like, you know, maybe. Yeah, it opened up a door, a yeah. common ground. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, Bebop, you know, I love, yeah. I, I'm, another reason I'm so pleased to have met you and to know about you and share you with others is the fact that you do do jazz. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'm seeing a lot more jazz going around lately. Yeah. So I'm thinking it's making a resurgence back into a lot of the cities. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And, and yeah. Uh, I, think I mean, it's I, it was so funny. I have to tell you this real <laughs> fast. Um, I had to laugh because there is actually an ensemble right now that's going around to all the cities and they're mm -hmm. portraying uh, Jimmy Dorsey's band. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they get sold out. So yeah. I, I'm so happy to see cool. that. Yeah. And, you know, I think in some regards, jazz is an interesting genre because it started out really as a music, you know, blues as a music of oppression. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in many ways um, there still is that. And I think that it's kind of trickled into different um, subgenres, different kind of
kind of jazz fusion genres and um, some more classic bebop. So I think you can see now there are people doing all different um, kind of eras of jazz or they're, you know, highlighting specific eras yes. of jazz. I'll be it's listening really to a rock song. I tell you, I mean, a hard rock song and all of a sudden they'll have this big jazz portion put in there. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like, but I remembered them because of that. It was different yeah. and creative. So I think it's important now to um, take aspects of it that you relate to or, you know, who, whoever the musician is relates to and do something new with them, something fresh, because you know, nobody wants to hear the same exact thing that's been done no. many times. So I think it's good to put, you know, your own spin on it and, and to really take what connects to you personally. So. Well, to me, jazz gets right into the soul. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I mean, people can't not move when they hear jazz. <laughs> I, yeah. I know I click my fingers and I move <laughs> the body. I can't not do that. Yeah. I, what a better form of music. Mm -hmm, definitely. To, I mean, communicate with people without even talking. You know? Right. <laughs> Just That's by the beat. Cool. <laughs> well, That's I'm going to take a little break right now because I don't know about anybody else, but I'm ready to hear some more of your <laughs> wonderful music. So, Thanks. folks, we'll be right back after this and speak a little bit more with our wonderful guest, Rebecca Angel.
And I am your host, Monica Brinkman, and we have been talking with the extremely talented, wonderful jazz vocalist, Rebecca Angel. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Thanks for having me. You know, Rebecca, I want to thank you. Uh, you know, first of all, I have to say something. You are a very intelligent person. Thank you. Um, and part of that is common sense because the things that we spoke about, they made so much sense, but people just don't even think about it because it's mm -hmm. too obvious in their face. So mm -hmm. I have to commend <laughs> you on that. Thank you. Okay. Um, now, Dad played the trumpet, you said, right? Mm -hmm. I, I have to give him a, a, you know, hey, Dad, <laughs> my brother played the trumpet. It is not an easy instrument. No, not. <laughs> you know, you got to have some lungs. And yeah. You got to have some pucker power <laughs> to do it correctly. So I don't think you could have a better teacher. Now, do you play any instruments yourself? I grew up playing piano. Oh, I love it. I actually started doing piano um, and singing at the same time when I was in like middle school. So that actually really helped me with songwriting and learning more techniques and just improvising in general. Um, but I also dabble with the ukulele a little bit. Oh, I love the uke. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I also have a loop machine, which actually I used on my recent EP for Stand By Me. So I kind of consider that like a third instrument as well. Right. Because um, it's like learning a whole new thing um, and studying. So that's, yeah, I'm exploring that more as well. <laughs> yeah, you, there's so much you can do nowadays. It's true. Mm -hmm. Ah, your kitty's here. We love kitties. Oh, no. <laughs> In fact, we used to have a, a mascot because Punky would be on the show, but she passed away. But um, oh. what a cute kitty. Okay, I have to ask Kitty's name. <laughs> Tara. Tara, if I closed the door, she'd be scratching and meowing. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I love animals. I always think it tells a lot about a person if they love animals. You know. Yeah, <laughs> so, why did um? Oh wait, a minute, I have to ask you. I read somewhere, and I'm I don't know if I have the actual facts, so maybe you can fill me in. But weren't you one of the new up and coming indie artists in New York? Didn't you get um, a, a mention of that? I'm trying to think. Um, I'm not sure specifically in the artist, but yeah, you might have seen. I've gotten a lot of reviews recently from like all over the world. Well, there's so someone that wrote I, one because I saw it. And yeah. for, I don't know, for you to make the list is remarkable. Yeah. Just remarkable. So what do you have planned for the future? I. I yeah, so, um, well, we just released this EP about a month ago, or two months ago, mm -hmm. and um, so we've been promoting this, and, you know, it's had great reception so far, so that's really exciting. I'm starting to perform more, I'm doing a festival in Westchester County next month, and um, looking at performing in the city more. I also have a song coming out in the fall which I'm very excited about. It's called Thoughts and Prayers. Um, oh. The recent more political climate and um, gun policy. So I'm excited to release that. Um, well, you have to let us know when that happens. Because, yeah, I definitely will. You know, and I always find, I mean, yeah, you can take someone else's song and make mm -hmm. it your own and sing mm -hmm. it your way. Yeah. And it'll touch people. But to me, the ones that touch me the most are those that are written by the artist. Mm -hmm. Because they're mm -hmm. really the only one that knows how to perform it. Yeah, that's definitely true. You know, it's in their head. Mm -hmm. uh, at least sure. that's what I say. <laughs> so, um, do you have a preferred style of jazz? Uh, I love the bossa nova style. <laughs> and, and my producer, Jason, really got me into that, um, showing me, like, Astro Gilberto, uh, Bebe Alberto, um, you know, Sergio Mendes, like, the list goes on, but just tons of great, great jazz, um, you know, Brazilian performers, and I was really lucky to actually record Jet Samba, which is on my EP, and Yes, that was written by Marcos Valle, he's a very famous composer, 
So I was the first one to do vocals on that, which was very exciting. And um, and so he he's written Summer Samba, which I don't know. A lot of people recognize from like the the sixties. So that was really cool to be able. Oh, to yeah. Do that. So I definitely have delved into the the Brazilian jazz um, kind of feel because I think that's one that a lot of people um, mm -hmm. miss kind of but no it yeah, does so smooth and so cool and i think it works really well in the rhythmic um aspect of it it's just very complex so we did incorporate a lot on my ep which you know was great i really loved doing yeah i noticed uh, the way that you um what i want to say in inflect or um mm -hmm. verb verbalize mm -hmm. the lyrics when you sing them you know exactly when to put the right emphasis. <laughs> Thanks. And I don't think anybody realizes how difficult that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And how long it takes to practice that and get it right. just right. Yeah, that's something I worked on a lot in voice lessons throughout college. Um, so it's definitely something that's, you know, that takes practice and takes thought beforehand. Um, what makes sense, where it makes sense to phrase things. So, um, yeah, that's definitely something. Did you take on. vocal lessons also? Yes. Yeah, vocal lessons I did all throughout high school and college. Well, I always, you know, people think it's a waste of time, but I really, I don't believe it. Um, learning to breathe properly is probably the most important mm -hmm. thing that any vocalist will yeah. ever learn. You and breathe I, differently for different styles and different yeah. notes and different sounds. Mm hmm And I think something that's also great for breathing that I've done is yoga, because that's a lot of um, kind of mind-body connection with the breath. And I think it's something all, all vocalists should do and musicians, you know, instrumentalists. So I think um, that's really helped me. But yoga is becoming very popular, and I'm glad to see that. <laughs> You know, I, what a nice relaxing way to to relieve all the tensions. And like you said, and look at the benefit you get from it. Yeah, true. <laughs> Not paying anyone. Definitely. <laughs> oh gosh. So, do you plan on ever doing a tour, getting maybe an ensemble together? Yeah, yeah. I have some musicians that um, I've been rehearsing with, and hopefully, we'll do that performances in this New York City. Um, but, you know, we are looking for in the future to try to even go to Europe and um, try to travel around in the country a little bit more. But I am starting out a little bit more locally to get my feet wet. Yes. Um, see how it goes over. But definitely long, long term goals is to definitely travel more and, and go abroad. Okay, so we poor people who aren't in New York. <laughs> <laughs> what if we want to buy your music? <laughs> you can, I have my music out on Spotify, um, Apple Music, iTunes, Amazon. So you can really purchase it anywhere online. And it's also um, on YouTube. So you can find it anywhere, which is exciting. Uh, I tried to make it as public as possible. So you can also find it on my website, RebeccaAngel.net. Um, it's there, so and it'll take you to the links to buy it or, or stream it. So fantastic! That. Yeah, that's and you have a website also, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's RebeccaAngel.net, um, and I post there different performances coming up. I'll have videos soon and um, different reviews and all that stuff, so you can keep up to date with me there. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a nice way, and nice site too. It really is. It, it's yeah, well thought you. out. Whoever yeah. created that. Do any young women, young girls, let's, you know, like ones that are between, let's say, nine and 15, ever come up to you and after you do a show or are they normally not in the, you know, the <laughs> venues? <laughs> Honestly, a lot of the um, venues I've been in are a little bit older crowds. Uh huh. Um, so I haven't had that experience as much, but. Um, I've had people of all ages come up to me, and um, it's really cool to be able to, you know, get your music in front of different types of people, different ages. So 
Um, yeah, hopefully I'll, I'll be performing yeah, at this festival coming up. There's going to be all age groups and kids, so I'm sure I'll, I'll see more um, age yeah. diversity there. <laughs> yeah, I just don't think there's anything more precious than when yeah. you're performing and there's <laughs> a child just in awe of it. Aww. That's your future. I performer do have, right there. Yeah, I do have my, my little nephew who's two years old and, and he it was really cute. He came to my last gig and was just like standing there with his, you know, smiling, <laughs> twinkling eyes. That was definitely uh, touching. <laughs> you were cute. his idol at that time, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I, I love that your parents and, and your dad mm -hmm. got involved. Yeah, we do it supported you because many a time that isn't the case. Right, right. I, I was very lucky that my dad um, has been so supportive. And I think he gets it because he is a musician himself, um, where I know that's not the case for everyone. So I am very, very fortunate. Yeah. My mom, also an artist, um, painter. She was a painter and makes jewelry. So they're both. Very what kind of painting? Specific. She did um, a lot of. Oh, what do you call it? Um, kind of like antique painting. Um, she used old prints, but she she mainly does jewelry making now. Ah. So she makes her own jewelry. Um, but both of them have been so supportive and really. Um, and creative healthy. people. Yeah, creative people, which I. Well, now we know good. the genes you got. No wonder. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, so that was definitely very lucky for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, I just, I, I just can't wait to, you know, um, see your next release, and we're going to continue to play your music to people on our show and such. And I want to tell everybody who's listening right now, you know, you've met Rebecca, um, <laughs> you've heard her music, and we're going to hear a little bit more. Um, if you loved it, if you embraced it, if you liked her as a person share the information with someone else because that is probably the biggest thing you can do except for buying <laughs> the music <Right. laughs> we should go ahead and do that too <laughs> no that may i never i always wonder why people don't buy these music in masses i mean they they'll right. spend six eight ten dollars at starbucks <laughs> right right <laughs> it's very true <laughs> Help a musician, you know, help an artist. <laughs> but no, um, also something, and I think Rebecca will agree with me, is stop by and say hi to them. Let them know you like their music. Let them know what you would like to hear from them in the future. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, if there's any venues around the New York area right now, and you think that they would love to have Rebecca, <laughs> contact them yeah because that's, that's what it takes to get the person that you want to see in your area many many times right <laughs> gosh um rebecca unfortunately we're out of time <laughs> but i'm going to be following you as i know many of the people watching will be doing and i know there's going to be great things you have to read the reviews on her music and on the shows that she's done on her website because they are numerous and they're so true. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> well, Rebecca, we're going to listen to some more music right now. And you just keep in touch with us, okay? Thanks okay, so much for Bye. Bye, Monica. Things you are, they say that it gets too high. 
Ba ba da ba.